everybody, Rochelle here from Quebec Cyclidé. Today I will be giving you a beginner's guide to African cichlids water parameters. So stay tuned! Thank you so much for joining me. If it hasn't been done yet, hit that subscribe button to make sure not to miss a single one of my videos. I give a ton of information about African cichlids and just aquarium keeping in general. If you don't know me, my name is Rochelle and I own a local fish store in Terrebonne, Quebec. That is right outside of Montreal and I'm open to the public. So if ever you're from around here, just swing by, don't be shy. Enough business for today. Now let's get started. Water parameters are invisible to the naked eye, but they will determine whether or not your aquarium experience is a success. Rift Lake African Cichlids, so those are the cichlids from Lakes Malawi, Tanganyika, and Victoria. They need different water parameters than the other freshwater fish in order to thrive. The water from these lakes is very different than most tap water, and these differences are, again, invisible to the naked eye. In this video, I will be explaining which water parameters you should be checking and how to adjust them if necessary. It might seem like a lot of information to start off with, but keep in mind that with practice, you'll get used to adjusting these water parameters and it'll get very easy for you. The one thing you have to remember is stability is key. Okay, now you have to remember all of these other things. So keep your temperature for African cichlids between 25 and 27 degrees, but stable. When the temperature is too cold, their metabolism slows down and their immune system is affected. This makes them more prone to parasites and illnesses. Use a water heater to keep the water temperature stable. If it's too cold and you have a working water heater, buy a second water heater. If ever your water gets too hot, you're from one of those warmer countries. I, have, I don't have a miracle cure, unfortunately. I find adding ice too drastic, so I will usually add a fan in front of the aquarium. But of course, I'm from Quebec, so it doesn't get that hot here. We maybe have a week or two of extreme heat, but that's it. If you can't maintain the temperature because it's too high during the day, remember what I told you, stability is key. This means like let's say in the day it's 30 degrees Celsius and at night it goes down to 22. Don't let that temperature drop at night. Turn on your water heater and heat it up to the higher temperature. So keep it stable at let's say 29 degrees. That way there are no temperature variations. African cichlids can easily tolerate temperatures up to 30 degrees. So don't freak out if ever you have a couple of weeks where it's extremely high. These parameters should always be at zero. Ammonia and nitrite are extremely toxic. When your filter, your aquarium is completely cycled, you shouldn't have any trouble with these in your fish tank. For the first couple of months of fish keeping, it's a good habit to keep these in check. So test your ammonia using an ammonia test kit and your nitrite with a nitrite test kit. I won't go too much into detail about these parameters, even though they're extremely important, because I already co covered them in a bunch of other videos that I will post somewhere up here and I'll put them in the video description. Nitrate should be kept below 20 ppm, ideally. Nitrate is the pollution in your water. It isn't toxic when you don't have a lot, but the more you have, the more your fish are living in what feels like an intense smog. So test your nitrate with nitrate test kits. Nitrate is removed during your regular water changes. If you failed at doing them regularly, it's always possible to get back on track by doing some big 50% water changes daily until you achieve a decent nitrate level. GH is short for general hardness, so it measures all of the minerals in the water of your aquarium. This includes magnesium, calcium, chloride, sodium, and so much more. These minerals are essential to your fish's metabolism. So depending on the kind of fish you get, the GH value required is different. Here in Terrebonne, where I'm from, the tap water usually comes out around 50 ppm but you can test it yourself with most GH and KH aquarium test kits that you can get at your local fish store or in the links in the video description. Rift Lake African cichlids should be kept in an aquarium with over 300 ppm of GH. 
<laughs> so this might seem like a lot, but in the wild, the GH can go up to over 2000 ppm of, G uh, of minerals. Contrary to the saltwater aquarium, which needs an exact amount of salt, African cichlids are more tolerant to different amounts than those in the lake. To raise your GH, you need to use aquarium salts. Now, by aquarium salts, I don't just mean regular aquarium NaCl salt. These have other uses, but they're not an appropriate staple for your African cichlids. Now, if you have other fish like American cichlids or community fish and you're watching this video, like salt is not good for them. This is just African cichlids we're talking about. The regular salts, like the NaCl, they only have sodium and chloride. But you need the whole shebang. For African cichlids, I use Seachem Cichlid Salt. It has all the minerals they need in the good balance for their metabolism. Keeping your African cichlids in a higher GH rather than just a GH from your uh, tap, it'll make them healthier and will make them color a lot more. So KH is not GH, it's called carbonate hardness. It measures the amount of carbonate minerals in your water in comparison to the GH that we just saw that measures all of the minerals. This parameter is usually measured in PPMs and has a very specific use. It creates a buffer for your pH. So basically the higher it is, the easier you'll be able to maintain a high pH because I, I use this term loosely, it absorbs the acidity in your aquarium. On the contrary, if your KH is too low and you're trying to raise your pH, you will ruin yourself in products and you'll never achieve your desired results. So once the KH's buffer is used up, you will notice a drop in your KH. So for Rift Lake African cichlids, you have to keep your KH around 240 ppm. To raise it, it's extremely easy. You use a coral substrate. These rocks will emit minerals in the water that will raise your KH a little. And you can also use buffers that raise the KH of the water. I enjoy the Seachem again, Seachem Malawi Victoria buffer or the Tanganyika buffer if you have Tanganyikans. And these products also help for the next parameter we're gonna see, pH. So I'm not going to get into the details of what pH is. This is a beginner's video. Basically, I'm just gonna give you what you need to know. It's that the pH, well, it varies from one to 14. Under seven is acidic and above seven is alkaline, and seven is neutral. Depending on where your fish are in the world, where they're from, the necessary pH will vary. Keeping fish in their appropriate pH value is important to their well-being. Rift Lake cichlids from Lake Malawi and Victoria should be kept in a pH of 8.2, and in Tanganyika, it can go even higher, but most Tanganyikans will adapt in a pH of 8.2 to 8.4. If you keep your fish in a pH that is too low for them, their bodies aren't able to function properly. Their colors will be different, and in cases of extreme difference between the required pH of your aquarium and the water's pH, their organs might not function properly. So during your water changes, make sure that your pH doesn't vary too much, as variations in pH are dangerous for your fish and are a huge stress factor. Having a high KH value will limit the pH variations during your water changes. So to raise pH, you're going to need a higher KH, which acts as a buffer to avoid pH variations and to maintain a higher pH. You can use commercial buffers that raise and maintain both KH and pH. And also if you want an African cichlids tank, just use coral substrate as a natural buffer or else you'll never be able to raise your pH above 7.5 using only products. Chlorine and chloramine are bad for your fish and for the bacteria in your filter, but it's in most of our tap water. Use water conditioners to dechlorinate your tap water. Some of these products also help fish with their mucus production. Mucus serves as an external protection for your fish. Since they produce a lot less when they are in the aquarium, it's good to help them out a little bit. I do not suggest letting the water sit still to let the chlorine naturally evaporate. Technically, it takes 24 hours, but during that 24 hours where everything is open, you have dust, you have contaminants that can get into your water, especially if you have curious cats and dogs at home. They will drink the water, their dandruff will go in it, and you, you can just contaminate your aquarium like this. Also, unlike chlorine, 
chloramine doesn't evaporate. So if you're letting your water sit, the chloramine doesn't really go anywhere. So just use the products, they're not that expensive and they help your fish. They, of, they often have a second um, usefulness of, to them, like the mucus production and some detoxify ammonia as well. So use those. Fish that are in a tank with good parameters will be more colorful, more energetic and healthier in the long term. Now I know some of you might say that you never tested any of these and everything is fine. Well, good for you if you got lucky, but try testing them and see if you notice any changes. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you liked this video. If you did, there is plenty more where that came from. So subscribe to my channel and make sure not to miss a single video. Also, if you want more fishy content in between my videos, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, on TikTok, and I have a great website where you can shop online and see all the fish I have for sale. Also, if you like this fabulous Cichlid Geek t-shirt, Fish Geek is also available on my Teespring store. The t-shirts ship worldwide and they encourage me to continue doing what I'm doing and delivering all these awesome videos. So thank you to everyone who supports me in my Teespring store in my YouTube channel and in my actual physical store in Terrebonne, Quebec. You guys are the best. And thank you to everyone for tuning in. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.